we're going to look at another problem, um, not that different from the one we just considered. Um, so the scenario, as, as it's laid out here, is that we've got water coming out of a out of a tap. All right. So here's our tap. Right. Here's the here's the water coming out of the tap, and it's forming this puddle, which perhaps implausibly remains perfectly circular and maintains this constant depth, right? So we think of it as sort of a disk, right? So probably if we want, we could make up some sort of laws about surface tension or something keeping this, this depth at a constant uh, value of one eighth of a centimeter, but We'll just leave it at that, right? Um, okay, so we know that the water is flowing at a rate of two milliliters per second. And we need to remember that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter, right? We need to be able to relate um, units of volume to units of length to solve this problem. Okay. Um, all right, so what can we say about the area, right? Um, and first of all, let's keep in mind, this two milliliters per second, what is that doing? Well, we're adding water to the puddle, right? We have to kind of think about, you know, what are you being told about when you tell that water is coming at a rate of two milliliters per second? What's changing, right? Well, again, milliliters, measure of volume, volume is changing, right? So this two milliliters per second is dV dt. It's the rate at which the volume is changing with respect to time. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have a relationship here between area, if we under the first one, area and volume? Well, we do. For something that has constant kind of thickness like this, the volume is simply the area times the height, okay? So in this case, one over eight times the area, okay? Simple enough. Um, so we actually don't even need to worry about the fact that it's a circle here, right? In fact, the only thing we really need to know is that the depth is constant. This, the fact that it's a circular puddle doesn't even matter, matter in this problem. All that matters is, again, the proportionality between the volume and the area. We saw this in the previous problem, right? Um, so for the first one, taking the derivative of both sides, dv dt, using the constant rule, will be 1 over 8 times dA dt. Um, we know dv dt, we're interested in dA dt, so we multiply both sides by 8, right? So the rate at which the area is changing is 8 times the rate at which the volume is changing. And probably you could have figured that one out for yourself, but we'll leave it at that, okay? Okay, so we have that relationship. Um, notice that we, we don't necessarily bother to put units in right away, right? Really, this 1 over 8 is, is 1 over 8, you know, it's 1 over 8 centimeters. This is centimeters, right? Um, so there's a 1 over, so this is now 8 kind of centimeters to the minus 1 here, right? Because area is in centimeters squared, volume is in centimeters cubed. We divide by centimeters, works out, right? Um, we generally just put the, put the units in at the end. Okay. Um, so again, water is flowing in, volume is increasing, so the rate should be positive. Um, and so all we have to do is put those numbers in, right? So it's going to be 8 if we want centimeters to the minus 1 times 2 cubic centimeters per second gives us a rate of 16 square centimeters per second. Um, at which the area is changing. Okay, so that's not so bad. Uh, now, 
For radius, well, here's where we actually have to put in the value of the radius, right? So once again, we are going to work with the fact that the volume is area times height, but now we actually have to put in that area is pi r squared, right? So this is pi r squared times h. Um, by the way, this is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. That might come up in other problems that you're looking at, right? So we have pi over 8 times r squared. Um, and just like in the, the follow-up to the last problem we looked at, we realized that when we take the derivative, we don't have quite enough information because we have v is equal to pi over 8 r squared. That means that dv dt is going to be pi over 8 times 2r times dr dt, again using implicit differentiation. And so if we solve for dr dt, right, so we got to multiply by, let's see, well, we multiply by 8, we divide by 2 pi r, we're going to get 4 over pi times r times dv dt. Okay. So once again, um, we can't solve the problem until we actually know the radius, right? But we can think about what this is telling us and think about whether it makes sense, right? Um, so you're adding water at a constant rate and you're asking sort of how does that affect the, the rate at which the radius is increasing? And if you think about it for a while, yeah, it makes sense that if you have a small puddle and you start adding water at this rate, uh, that's going to make more, than, more of a difference than if you have a really big puddle and you're adding water, water at the same rate, right? Um, the small puddle is going to increase in radius faster than a large puddle is. Um, so that makes sense, right? So now if somebody said, right, so the kind of question you might be asked here is something like, um, you know, at what rate is the radius increasing um, when the radius is equal to 10 centimeters, right? Um, or, or you might even, even do something like, you know, uh, at what, there's a lot of different variations on this. You could ask, at what rate is the radius increasing, um, let's say, one minute after the puddle began to form, right? And then you have to think, well, okay, if we start at time zero with zero volume, right? Um, after a minute, well, a minute is 60 seconds. We've been getting adding water at two milliliters per second. So after a minute, uh, we have a total volume of 120 milliliters, right? And we can put that into here and we can say, okay, uh, if the volume is 120, what's the radius? Put that in, right? There's, there's lots of different ways that you can change these up and make the, make the problems slightly more or less challenging depending on the information that you're given.